Um, so if we look over the last couple of weeks, BTC realized was pretty stable at around 40 vol. Uh, Ethereum was at around 50 vol. So actually realizing better than Bitcoin, apart from this little last move that we've seen on, on the move uh, over the over the last 24 hours. Um, you know, the uptick in, in realized and the fact Sorry, the fact that the uptick in both realized and implied is all about the hype for the ETF and, and the event risk, you know, that has left us in a very positive vol carry environment. So you can see that by these red bars here. So this is where we measure the difference between the realized vol and the implied. And the, the implied, certainly the weeklies have gone crazy, but there's quite a big spread there. And that's what this red bar being at its highs is all about. So that red bar being at its highs, if we go back for many, many years, suggests that this level of implied realized differential is not sustainable. It's typical to get a bit of high vol carry going into a big event like this. But the question is how much of the event is already priced in? So even if we get a big 5 to 10% move in Bitcoin on the news, we think this implied vol is just going to get annihilated, right? And, and it's got a lot of downside to get back to maybe 10, 15 vols lower than where it currently is. To And you'll still have a relatively positive vol carry. Um, so similar story on Ethereum, not as much vol carry there, but still positive. We've seen the implies trade higher and the realized be much more stable. Um, so I think flipping positions, when the vol is looking so elevated, the vol carry is so positive, we're going into a major event that the market has had massive anticipation about. It does make sense to be, if you've been long vol and long options, now is the time where you should be taking those off and even considering getting short options if you've got the appetite for that, because that's where the opportunity lies now, right? The opportunity is not in being long vol on crypto now, it's in being short vol, right? And that's that's what I try to do, right, in these reports and in my own trading is to try and show you that you can make money both being long and short. And it's you can be flexible. You can use these indicators and these metrics to kind of guide you as to when to turn your book around. Uh, and and we're not we're not saying you should go and be short ridiculous amounts of vol and over lever your book so you're going to blow up if, if if a big move happens. But if you are long crypto holdings and you've been long calls, now should be the time where you either want to take profit on those calls, sell higher calls against them, or sell calls against your holdings. So that you can take advantage of this really expensive implied vol that it's pretty much a certainty that this implied vol is going to come down by 10 to 15 vol points in the front end over the next sort of month or so. OK, uh, so that's kind of how I would think about it. We'll talk a bit more detail about exactly what I've done for my books. Um, term structure wise, we went inverted or backward dated in Bitcoin as, as the front expiry, the front weekly has now become the event risk. So that front end is at 70 odd vol. It obviously goes down, but the long end caught a four vol bid as well, which is not small. It's a decent bid. So that long end at 62 arguably has got some downside in it as well. So I wouldn't be too excited about being long too much Vega in the back end of the curve as well, but I do see that having the ability to reset down. Um, okay, and then Ethereum flattening, uh, not quite going inverted, but flattening, looking at about 67, 68 vol flat right now. So you can see the front end was up 13 points. Back end was up seven points. So back end ETH has caught a real bid and is sitting at about 68 vol. Now, I think the back end vol in ETH might persist a bit longer than, than say, Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin could come under pressure sooner rather than later. Uh, but I do think the ETH story is going to persist for a, a longer period of time, which is going to lead to more interest in the back end vol in ETH. And you might start to see that spread really start to elevate and go back to the old the old ways of being above 10 vols over Bitcoin, I think that's probably where we're heading. Uh, it's just like, what's the path going to look like to get there? Okay, um, so that is what term structure has been up to in the, in the two main assets. Relative value-wise, so obviously because of Bitcoin catching a bid in the front, because of the event, uh, we have seen the front end collapse into Bitcoin premium again. So you're looking at a marginal sort of two vol premium in the weeklies for Bitcoin. But then as you go to the one month, we've got back to a positive, uh, to a Ethereum premium of about one to two vols. And when we go to the back end, we've got Ethereum premium of about six vols. So we are seeing that it's very much a short-term phenomena where they expect a big gap on Bitcoin potentially on the ETFs and then the, the move's done. And Ethereum is now in the driving seat in terms of volatility and is likely to be a higher beta, a higher vol asset, according to the options market right now. OK, you can see that here. The weekly has moved back down, 
but the longer term spreads have stayed positive, as has the realized spread as well. Now, the ETH BTC spot spread uh, did dip below this key support zone of 0.051 that we've been tracking. It dipped down to 0.05 round number. It has bounced off there and is back above the key support level. Uh, we might get another retest of those lows or even a break of those lows on a knee jerk reaction on the ETF approval. But we still like long term. We like it as a long term entry into this spread. Like I've been banging on this drum for over a month now. So if you were to get that knee jerk, I think a smart thing to do would be to buy ETH BTC because I don't think that thing is just going to collapse and break lower from these levels. Um, and the way to, you could do that, if you didn't want to do it through Delta, a straight Delta, you could do it by these ETH Bitcoin call switches that we've been talking about, whether you do it in March, June, even longer dated, potentially. They are a very attractive way at, at a vol spread level that is still not ridiculously expensive. Uh, they are a nice way to get participation in an ETH repricing later on this year, if you believe that's the way we're going to go. And, and I am in that camp right now. Okay. Um, so that is relative value. Skew wise, uh, BTC call skew did come back pretty quick. Remember, we dipped into put skew a couple of weeks back when we did our last crypto weekly on the 19th of December. Uh, we were getting a bit of a wobble in spot and we were seeing some short date put buying. Uh, that didn't last very long. Skew came flying back for the calls. Um, call buyers came in, call spread buyers came in. Um, and, and we basically now see the entire curve one month and out in a, a cool premium of about three to four volts. Um, we're seeing a similar story uh, in Ethereum, holding a cool premium as well, even though Spot hasn't really broken to quite the same extent as Bitcoin. And it just shows that option players are positioning for the narrative where BTC Spot ETFs get approved and then attention switches to Ethereum upside. That's why that, that cool skew has been around for some time now. Okay. Now, the fact that these skew levels are nowhere near as high as they were sometime in November, where they really went nuts, tells you that options players are not going and reaching for out, outright calls on the upside. They're buying call spreads. They're buying close to the money optionality. They're happy to sell the strikes at like 50K, maybe 60K and it's slightly longer dated maturities because they're saying that a lot of this move has already been priced in. So we don't need to reach for that upside vol and pay a large premium for it. So the fact that SKU's not trading so crazy is kind of informing us that, yes, the odds are that a lot of this rally's done. And, and, and even if we get a knee jerk up to 50K, that might be it. And then we just retrace and pull back and kind of end up close to where we started off after the approvals are done, right? So don't be surprised by that. Um, and then... Yeah, the last thing I would say is Ethereum call premium is probably going to be sticky in the long end. Um, the short end, we'll probably find some call selling, gamma selling, because that stuff decays fairly fast. I think anything in sort of June onwards is going to be pretty sticky and they'll be willing to pay five vols plus for calls for, for a large part of this year, because that's kind of how... If you look at how Bitcoin skew traded last year, where that story was there, those long dated calls just never went, they never went away. They, they were always, a, there was always a bid for long dated calls last year in Bitcoin. And I think we're going to see a similar phenomenon in Ethereum this year until we get a definitive repricing and we see Ethereum go from 2,500 to 3,500, something like that, then, then that would have played out basically, right? But that for me, that is the kind of upside we're talking about, right? We're talking a potential 40% upside in Ethereum where it could really reprice. Um, and, and, and that's why I think the call bid is going to persist. Okay. Um, so that is the, the vol summary. Uh, obviously, the dashboard is screaming sell calls everywhere. Uh, so Bitcoin kind of off the map here, sell calls. Um, if we go to Ethereum, it's going to say a similar thing. But really, you're not going to sell these things naked. You're only going to do it if you've got holdings and you've run this rally nicely like we have. Then then for sure, it makes sense to be letting calls go or even overriding against your longs. Very, very sensible thing to be doing at these levels, I would say. Um, in terms of the flows, uh, volumes did understandably drop uh, to about 5 billion on, on uh, Bitcoin last week. But, but we did have the big expiry of December, 29th of December. So it probably would have been even lower volumes without that expiry. Um, in terms of the big clips that went up, uh, there was a dip buyer via January 42 50K call spreads. Um, 
We also saw some put spreads sold in January as well. The 40, 37 put spread, you know, basically saying vol is pumped. I think the thing's going to rally for the ETFs, but we've already had a good rally. So th those put spread sales are, are likely already in the money by quite a long way. Uh, we saw some activity on call calendars. So we saw March, June call calendars being bought. So people rolling from March to June, their long call positions. We also saw some short dated calls being bought in Jan and Feb and closer to the money stuff and then selling March calls against that as a calendar sale. And what they're doing there is buying the optionality for the move higher on the news, thinking there's still some upside, but not wanting to be exposed to the volatility reset that's likely to happen. So they're selling March Vega to kind of keep the Vega risk down to protect against that vol reset. Because we may, whatever way we move on the ETF news, it's a given that vol's coming down. So if you don't want to take a, take a hit on vol coming down and you just want the gamma and the explosivity of those upside calls, then the way to mitigate some of that is to sell higher, longer dated stuff that is going to have a short Vega position on it. Okay, and that's what some of these smarter vol players look like they have been doing. Um, Ethereum flows, Ethereum volumes were actually up a little bit in terms of notional, uh, just over 3 billion. Again, it was really expiry led. Um, the biggest clips outside of expiry stuff uh, were January call spread buys as well. This time the 2400, 2900 call spread in uh, Ethereum. So that's the type of stuff people are focusing on right now. You can see here these big January clips. And we also, uh, so here, and then we also saw so March 2000, 3000 call spread was bought as well. Uh, that's in the money already. Uh, but that's that's another way people are kind of trying to get long delta without getting long too much Vega, basically. OK. Um, and then protection also bought for a change in uh, March 1900, 1700 put spreads. OK, so those are the flows that we saw across uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum. How does the gamma positioning stack up? Well, remember, we were running sort of the street was running short gamma on Bitcoin for quite some time. That seems to be going away to a bit more neutral. So we are still short, but marginally. If you look at the way the strike setup is, dealers look to be short the 44, 4500 area, but they look to be long the 5000 calls. So the more we rally, the closer we get to those 5000s that everyone has sold as part of pool spreads. And that means dealers are long, which actually probably means that you don't get too explosive price action through that 50K strike, basically, right? So another reason why you might be comfortable thinking that we're going to struggle to break 50K in the near term because of dealer positioning. Looking at Ethereum, um, pretty neutral. It kind of hasn't really budged. It was near flat before we went on holiday and it's kind of still near flat. It did chop around a bit around expiry, but that's just a bit of noise. Um, looking at the strike makeup, um, dealers look to be long 2,400 to 2,450 area. They look like they're short above that, sort of 2,500 and above. Um, so if we did start to see Ethereum have a rally through 25, then actually it could start to get a bit more interesting because dealers don't seem to be choking on vol up there um, and it might start to feed on itself. We get a bit of a gamma squeeze, things like we've seen on uh, Bitcoin before. All right. So a bit of a different setup to what we've seen for, for a while on Ethereum. Uh, and, and Bitcoin not looking quite as short, short as it normally is. So they kind of, they, again, they might be changing roles a bit, right? In terms of the behavior, we know the narrative may be switching, but even the dealer positioning might be switching a bit. So you start to see dealers a little bit longer Bitcoin than they have been and a bit shorter Ethereum than they have been, right? Starting to see little signs that that might be the way things are, are turning. Not confirmed yet, but, but start, certainly starting to head that way. That's the summary for this week in crypto. Thanks a lot as always. I'll catch you guys later.